good evening, Shiloh Church family. It's great to have you back with us on this Wednesday night. Hope that you've had a great day in the Lord. I believe that you have. If you know him as your Savior, you know that every day is a good day when we know Christ as our King, Lord, and Savior. So it's great to have you back with us tonight by way of Facebook. Thank you so much for being a part of the Shiloh Church family. We are indeed honored to be able to pastor this wonderful family of believers. Uh, for those of you who have been attending the uh, corporate worship services at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings in the Family Life Center, we're grateful for each and every one of you who have been able to attend. I know that some have not made it back yet, but hopefully everybody very soon is going to be comfortable in getting back, and uh, we're doing our best to have everything socially distanced, and we're making available, of course, the hand sanitizer, the face mask if you feel you need them. Um, these items are located at the entry doors as soon as you come in. You can find the face mask and the hand sanitizer. And so we challenge you to come and be a part of that. We're asking families to sit together. And this is all a part of the socially distancing that we're doing in the Family Life Center. We come in the two entrances from either parking lot side. We all exit out through the hallway. And then you go whichever way, left or right, uh, depending upon which parking lot that you parked in when you got here. So we're doing our best to work with all the social distancing and the suggestions, and please come and be a part of us. We miss you if you're not being able to be here. We love you and appreciate you so much. And let me go ahead and mention to you that the good Lord willing, this Sunday, we're going to need you to pick up one item as you come through the doors, and that is this. Uh, this Sunday, we want to close our service with communion as we normally would do on our second Sunday. And so we're going to be using these for our communion this Sunday. Many of you have used these before at some event and possibly here at Shiloh in the past for some event. Um, but the wafer is on the top and then the juice, of course, is in the cup underneath. So please, when you come through the doors on Sunday morning, uh, if you're going to participate in communion, you need to pick up one of these and have it with you. Hang on to it. And at the close of our service, we plan to close with the second Sunday communion. So it's going to be great to be able to do that again. It's been a while since we did that together in person um, as a family. And so we're looking forward to doing that. May the Lord bless you. I hope that you're just continuing to look for ways to continue being the church, even though our corporate gathering is a little different than it has been. Let's continue being the church, touching people's lives for the glory of God. Let's continue to look for ways to be used of the master, because that's what being a Christian is all about, to be used of the master. We ask you to continue to pray for those of our church family who have special needs physically, um, needs, physical needs and spiritual needs, of course, first and foremost, and also financial needs. And we know that God is able to meet those needs. Would you pray with us? Father, we just lift all the needs up of our Shiloh Church family, whether those needs are as we've just stated, whether they're spiritual or physical or financial. Uh, it could even be a job situation or a family situation. We ask you to meet the needs of our Shiloh Church family and extended families. Thank you for the opportunity to spend a few moments looking into your word tonight. We ask that it would be profitable in all of our hearing. We give you praise for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to speak to you tonight, and I was sort of giving you a little bit of a hint in some of my opening remarks about what I want to share with you tonight. And that is when I mentioned about looking for ways to continue being the church, looking for ways to, to be used by the master. How many of you know that it is a privilege to be able to be used of the Lord Jesus Christ? And so we want to be sure that we are the kind of people fully that God can use. So what do you mean, Pastor? Well, uh, we are the ones that, first of all, have to answer the call to salvation. And then we also have to answer that call to service. We have to make ourselves available. And so there are some things that we can do as the Lord enables us and helps us that makes it to where we are able to be more greatly used of the Master. Just as there are some things that we could do that can be a hindrance to our fully being used of the master. And it goes the other way. There's some things that we could not do um, that could make us not as available. There's some things that we should not do that make us more available. And so tonight for a few minutes, I just want to share with you um, a few thoughts about being used of the master and being the kind of person that our God, our master, can use to the full extent as he would desire to. I'm going to take our main text tonight 
from the writing of the Apostle Paul as he wrote in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2 and verse 20 through 22. He shared these words uh, with Timothy, and here's what he said. He said, but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself, the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Now, I want to go back to that. 21st verse, and I want you to notice, it says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified, and useful for the master. Now, if he's telling us that there are things here we need to do to be useful and to enhance our usefulness to the master, it's only common sense that there are things that we could fail to do that would not make us as useful for the master. And I want to be able to be fully used of the master. I want you to notice that the Apostle Paul gives some great words of wisdom here, and we can take these words and should take these words to heart. After all, we that have been saved, we that have been born again, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, repented of our sins, truly saved, we should have a desire to be used of God. And we should understand and remember that it is not a burden, but it is a privilege to be used by the hand of God. It is not a burden, but it is a privilege to be used of God. Well, that doesn't mean there won't be some heartaches and trials and tribulations and hard things during when we are being used. Yes, that'll happen. But being used of the master, though there may be some burdens along the way, it's not a burden within itself. It is a privilege. The Apostle Paul actually gives five names for the Christian that you can look at uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 2. In verse 1, he calls us a son. In verse 3, he calls us soldiers. In verse 12, he calls us sufferers. In verse 15, he calls us students. And in verse 24, he calls us servants. We are a son or daughter if we've truly been born again. We're to be a soldier. We've been called to be in the army of the Lord. And yes, we're even called to suffer some tribulation and trial and persecution if we're his children. And we're always supposed to be a continuing student, a student of the word of God. And we're supposed to be servants, servants that are fit for the master's use. If you look through these verses, this is a powerful passage of Scripture here in this uh, particular chapter that we're looking at. And it's just so much. You could just, just preach over and over and over. And you can just see so many great things from these verses of Scriptures that are here. Well, what kind of person is it that God can use? What kind of person is it that God can fully use? Well, uh, some of the things that we need to be sure we're doing with His help to enhance that we are vessels, just like it talks about their vessels in our text, some to honor, some to dishonor. We want to be vessels of honor, vessels that can be used of the master. And some of the things that we need to remember and we need to be sure we're doing to enhance that usefulness is, first of all, we must be one that walks with God. In the book of Amos, the Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? So, Pastor, what's that got to do with walking with God, being used as a vessel that is a vessel of honor? Well, in order to be in agreement with God, you've got to be in His Word, and you've got to be in agreement with the Word of God. And so we need to be a person that walks with God, and that means we need to be in agreement with God. The walk with God is a wonderful walk. It's a great walk. It's not a walk without trouble or trial or heartache, but it's a wonderful walk. Actually, in Proverbs, we won't take time to read all the references, but you can see from one of the writings of Proverbs that it's a friendly walk. It's walking as friend, hand in hand with the master. We can read in 1 Corinthians that it's to be a faithful walk. We're to be steadfast in the Lord Jesus Christ, and it is to be a fruitful walk because we are to be 
bearing fruit for the master. So our walk with God is not just supposed to be just an ordinary stroll through the park. It's not. It's a wonderful privilege to be able to walk with God. And that walk should be a friendly walk, friend to friend. It should be a faithful walk as we're faithful to him. And it should be a fruitful walk as we're doing all that we can with the enablement of our Lord to be fruitful Christians. God has called us and ordained us to bear fruit. So to enhance the usefulness of Christ in our lives, to make us and help us to be the vessels that he can use and the kind of person he can use, we need to be persons that are truly walking with God on a daily consistent basis. Secondly, we not only need to be a person that walks with God, we need to be a person that will worship God. I believe that worshipers are more able to be greatly used of God than someone who refuses to worship. I quite frankly don't understand why anyone would not want to worship. I know we may not all worship exactly the same way. I understand that. But the privilege and the opportunity to worship, uh, when we get together in the house of the Lord, to sing the songs of Zion, to lift up holy hands, to open up our hearts, to clap our hands and to rejoice and to sing with passion and to worship uh, with fervor. It's such a joy and such a privilege. And that fact of being a worshiping person, it will enhance us and enhance the ability of our Lord in being able to use us. And we need to do that. We need to be a person that's a worshiper. We need to worship scripturally, just as the Bible tells us to. We need to worship spiritually, that's in spirit and in truth. We need to worship sacrificially. How many times do we have to give the sacrifice of praise? Every time that I lift my hand or lift my voice and sing the songs of Zion, I may not always feel like it. It's like the old chorus that we've sung for years. We bring the sacrifice of praise and we offer up to you. Talking about our God. So we need to worship scripturally and spiritually and sacrificially. And we also need to be that worshiping person that will worship submissively. Uh, we see on many occasions in the Bible where it talks about how that they bow down and worship. Uh, we should be people who are willing to bow down and to worship. It's a sign of submission. We should lift up our hands in worship. It's a sign of surrender and submission. We should lift up our hearts in worship. It's a sign of the passion and the love that we have for our Lord. What am I saying? In all that we do in our worship, it should be passionate. It should be fervent. It should be with all that is within us. We should be that worshiping person because it's not only being one that walks with God that helps us to be able to better be used of our master, but it's also one who worships God that helps us to be better used of our master. Well, it's not just by, about being a, one that walks with God and one that worships with God. Both, both of those points are critically important. But we've also got to be a person that's not just walking with God and worshiping God, but we've got to be a person that is willing to be used of God and willing to stand up for God. So we've got to be a person that will walk with him, a person that will worship him, but a person that will be willing to be surrendered to him. You can read beautiful stories in the Bible of different ones who were called of God, such as Isaiah and others. And what invariably had to happen from all of them, after they were called, they had to answer that call. And that's where that willingness comes in. You see, I, I fully believe that God calls every one of us that have been called unto salvation. God has called us to be a vessel fit for the master's use. Willing to be used of him is what should be found in us, a willingness to be used. We've got to be people who are willing to answer the call of God, willing to stand. What do we stand for, Pastor? We're to stand for this holy word of God. We're to stand for the right. We're to stand for truth. We're to stand for justice. We're hearing a lot about that right now, and I understand that. And yes, we are to stand for justice. The Bible tells us that we're to walk humbly with our God and that we're to love justice, and we should. So we've got to be people that are willing to stand. 
We've also got to be people that are willing to suffer because there is some suffering at times of varying degrees in being used of the master and living for Jesus Christ. But let me tell you, the suffering is nothing compared to the joy and to the uh, outcome in the days ahead uh, and in the end of our days, what will come to us for being willing to suffer. When we get over there, what we have suffered through down here, it won't even be willing to be compared to what's awaiting us over there. So we got to be willing to stand even when it seems we're the only one. we got to be willing to suffer even though it's not pleasant. None of us enjoy that. And we've also got to be willing to serve. The greatest example, we talked about this not so terribly long ago in one of our series. The greatest example of a servant is none other than the Lord Jesus himself. Because he didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. Where did we in the church get so off track sometimes of getting away from wanting to serve and just looking to be served? How did we get off track and think that church was just supposed to be about a, a laundry list of meeting our personal little wants and innuendos? No, we're supposed to be willing to serve, not just want to be served all the time. And not only should we be willing to stand and to suffer and to serve, but you know we'll also have to be willing to separate. We'll have to be willing to separate from things that hinder our usefulness to the Master and things that hinder our worshiping and walking with Him and worshiping Him and being willing to surrender to Him. Yes, there's going to have to be some separation from some things that would try to pull us down and to weight us down. That's why the Bible is very clear that we have to put off those weights and the sins which would so easily beset us. And then can I tell you, we not only need to be people that walk with God and worship God, people that are willing to surrender to him, but it also takes a person that's really used of God. They won't just be a walking, worshiping, and willing person. Do you know at times they'll be a, what we could call a weeping person? They will be at times a weeping person. Uh, let me share with you what I mean, and let me prove to you how that, that willingness to do that makes a difference in our effectiveness. I, I can show you that. Uh, you can find it in multiple places. But let me give you one of the greatest examples that's recorded in Psalms 126, verse 6. Watch what it says. He who continually goes forth weeping, and watch the serving here, bearing seed for sowing. So you see the weeping person that's willing to serve and that surrendered to serve, but watch what happens, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. What are the sheaves? Souls, results, harvest. I want to tell you that if we are going to be used of the master, like we need to be used of the master, there's going to be not only some, uh, what we can say, walking with him that's involved, worshiping him that's involved, being willing to be that willing person to be used. But did you know there's also going to be some weeping that's involved? How many times have we found ourselves moved with compassion? We should. Jesus was. We should. We should weep over those that are sick. We should weep over the saints that go through tribulation and trial. And we should most certainly weep over the sinner that is yet to come to know Jesus Christ. I have said this before, but I'll say it again. I sometimes think that we have become too hardened in the church at times. I think the 24-hour news cycle that began a long time ago has in some ways desensitized us in some respects and other things as well. We need a tender heart. We need a heart that can weep for the lost and for the hurting. If we can't, we need to get along somewhere with God and ask him to do a fresh work in us so that we can have a weeping type compassion for the lost, and the undone, the hurting, and those that are on their way to hell. So we have to be a person that is also willing to weep over the lost. And then it's not only about being that person that's walking with God and worshiping God, a person that's a willing person, willing to be surrendered fully to Him, a person that's a weeping person that weeps, has compassion, truly 
has compassion for the lost, but we've also got to be a working person. The Bible tells us, and let me read a couple of passages of scripture here to remind you of what we're talking about. But the Bible is very clear that God calls us to be persons who will work. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, we find these words, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Walk in what? Walk in good works. God's called us to be workers. Yes, we're to be worshipers. Yes, we're to be weepers, but he's called us to be workers. It's not just about getting saved and coming to church and say, okay, y'all just sing me happy and preach me happy. Let me just sit here and take in till Jesus comes. No, it's not about just occupying a pew. It's about occupying a position of labor. It's about being willing to be used of the master. It's about being willing to be workers in the field, workers in the house of God, people that'll teach Sunday school and people that'll be involved when we have special events. And yes, we will have those special events again. God willing, they're coming. We'll need workers. When we resume our Sunday school, we'll need teachers again and assistant teachers. We'll need those people to step up and be involved. God's looking for people that don't just want others to work for them, but they want to work for him and work in the best work there is. That's the kingdom. What did Jesus say is recorded as he said, lift up your eyes and look upon the field for the field is white already into harvest. But then what did he say? He said that the harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. Can I tell you in comparison of workers and laborers to the harvest and potential harvest that still rings true today? Oh God, give us more people that are willing to understand. God's looking for people, yes, that'll walk with him and worship him. People that'll be willing to surrender to him. People that'll weep over the loss. But it's not just about weeping for them. It's about working for him to reach them for Jesus Christ. Also, let me give you one other reference. And it's also found in the writing of the Apostle Paul. And he shared these words. This is what he said as he shared with Timothy on this occasion in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9. Here's what he says. Who has called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. He's called us not just to occupy a pew, but to stand and to work and to labor for the master. I want to continue to be that kind of person that God can use. I want to be the kind of vessel that the apostle talked about when he said that there were vessels that were vessels of dishonor. I don't want to be a vessel of dishonor. I want to be a vessel of honor. We sung another chorus here. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, to be holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, to be a living sanctuary. That's like another word for being that vessel that God can use. I want to be the kind of person that God can use fully. I hope that you do too. Why don't you just ask God, God, am I doing everything you really want me to do? Where do I need to improve? Is there somewhere that I'm not involved? Let me tell you what I believe about workers in the local church. You can call me foolish or you can call me outdated. You, you can call me whatever. But let me tell you what I believe. I believe this Bible when it says God meets the need. Therefore, some have said I look at it too simplistically, but that's okay. I've been called worse. This is what this preacher believes. If he's the God that meets every need, when there's a genuine need for help and workers in a local church, if the positions are not being filled, it's not because God won't provide. It's because somebody's not answering. Somebody's not stepping up. Somebody's not being that willing vessel that they need to be because God 
is a God that promises to meet our needs. And I believe he does that in part by having people that are willing to walk with him, to worship him, that are willing to be surrendered to him. People that will be ones that will weep over the lost and that will, as the old saying goes, just put their shoulder to the wheel and go to work. You see, I didn't get into this thing just to reap the joys of being saved. I want to give something back. I want to win others to Jesus Christ. May God help us to be those workers, willing vessels that he's called us to be. I love you. God bless you. I hope to see you Sunday morning at 10 a.m. in the Family Life Center. I'm so excited to say that again, as I mentioned um, in one of our earlier times. It's exciting to be able to say, I look to see you here at Shiloh at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. God bless you. It won't be the same without you if you're not here. Please come. We love you. We'll see you then.